This feature all by itself would be the reason I would switch from the Canon R6 Mark I to the Canon R6 Mark II. Hi, I'm Jared Hoyman with VisibleTour.com and welcome to the final hours before Canon announces the new Canon R6 Mark II, which has been anticipated for a whole, I don't know, couple of months, but more so over the last few days, there's been a lot more excitement because it kind of sprung up fast. They haven't really hinted much at it. So we've been going off of rumors, leaks, and the latest leak has been the photos. And so based on this photo, this would get me to change from the R6 to the R6 Mark II. And that would be on the lower left-hand side, you can see that you can switch between camera and video. And on the right side, you've got the lock and the on and off switch right there. But the fact that they have separated, um, the Canon R7 is an amazing camera where you can switch it on the right side from uh, on to photo to video but sometimes it was easy to just flip it all the way to video when you wanted photo or to photo when you were trying to go all the way to video. Here they have separated it completely on the left side so there's no mincing words. The sad thing is Panasonic has been doing this for like a decade. So um, Canon is finally catching up. So now you've got this separate dial on the far left side that's gonna be specifically for camera, specifically for video. And what that also means is now you can program the Canon R6 Mark II in the video end of things, which is gonna be fantastic. I've really enjoyed the Canon R7 where you can actually use the custom one, custom two, and custom three dial and program it specifically for video. Then you switch it to photo mode, program it specifically for photo. And that's the way it should have been to begin with. And so the Canon R7 does that, the EOS R has done that, the 5D Mark IV has even allowed you to do stuff like that. Um, so why hasn't the Canon R6? But I'm glad to see that Canon actually has that separate dial. It has become more of a video centric camera, in my opinion, based on the Canon R7. Now with the R7, you've got the hot shoe on top of the electronic connection, which then you're using the Tascam XLR and it makes it more of a professional camera with that professional audio. It appears that that same chipset is going to be on the Canon R6 Mark II, which makes me excited because now I can use the Canon R7 or the Canon R6 Mark II when I'm putting that Tascam XLR hookup on to get that digital connection in 24-bit audio. That's huge when it comes to filmmaking because now we don't have to worry about the digital dials. You're using the tangible physical dials of the Tascam. And now you can do that directly on with the R6 Mark II, which is gonna be great. Um, overall, there isn't a lot more that they have given us. We have no idea um, if the HDMI is a full size, mini, a micro again. It doesn't really bother me if it is a micro HDMI because I don't use the HDMI of my cameras. I used to when I used an Atomos Ninja 5, but Everything I want to do, I can record onto the SD cards, but it may be a big deal for you. So here's to full size. So the physical layout on the back looks identical to the R6, which I'm used to it. It'll be a great transition into my workflow when it comes to architectural photography. And then I'll be able to switch over to video right away and do the 60 frames per second when it comes to video walkthrough, slow that down to a nice 24 frames per second for slow motion. So it doesn't appear to be a lot different on the back end. The top reveals a lot, and that is enough for me as a working professional. What we're gonna be anticipating next is what are the internals gonna be like? What is the 24 megapixel sensor? Is it the same as the R3? Although we've only been really anticipating this for the last couple of weeks, it feels like it's built up quite a bit. So I hope Canon doesn't let us down with these. We know there's a cripple hammer out there. It has happened, but they've also surprised us. And the R5 has been a surprise. And honestly, the R6 has been a good surprise as well, even though a lot of people like to complain about it. I've used it since launch and haven't been mad at it. I haven't yelled at it or anything. Probably could yell at it if I wanted to, but why would I do that to the Canon R6? It's just 
He's as good as whoever programmed him. If you want to keep up with all the news, please hit the subscribe button and that notification bell right there as well, because the moment my video is released, you will get a notification and then you can tune in right away. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed to my channel over the last couple of years and especially over the last couple of weeks. It really is compounded up, but that's because I think we all are craving better technology, better cameras and how to use them. There's so many things to do. Again, I'm gonna be releasing some more videos on DaVinci Resolve and cameras, and eventually I'm gonna be doing an R7 versus an R6 Mark II and an R6 Mark II versus an R6. So stay tuned for when those come because they'll come when the R6 Mark II comes. So subscribe and I will see you in the next video.